<clears throat> Good morning. It's Wednesday, September 29th. One more day of September. And then we move into the wonderful month of October, which I do like October. I like, I love the fall. I'm definitely where I enjoy summer more than I enjoy winter anymore, but I do love the fall. <clears throat> Beautiful weather. Just a good time, isn't it? Miss Joyce, Brian, glad you're on here. It's probably a little chilly over there in Meeker today. Elizabeth, glad you're on here. <clears throat> I will uh, do my best when I get back to Missouri. Uh, one of these days I will get to church there. I, uh, I'm gonna be back there this weekend, but I'll be in Warrensburg on Sunday. So for, the, for a funeral that afternoon, so I won't be able to be there this Sunday, but try to get back there during deer season, say hi and meet everybody. Miss Susan, glad you're on here too. So, uh, oh, there's Carol and Nelson. Glad you guys are on here too. Um, so, keep us from getting tagged by mentioning uh, certain things. Like, we, we don't want to mention that word anymore because then we get tagged, right? and misinformation. So we don't want to give out any misinformation on. So uh, the little bots will hear that and then we'll get tagged. So we're gonna, we're just gonna call it um, hamster disease. All right. <laughs> so from now on, it's, uh, if I'm talking about, I'm just gonna call it hamster disease. All right, so. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think so. I had a friend yesterday. Uh, he, uh, his thoughts, you know, his thoughts are uh, that since uh, ham hamster disease is uh, a genetic, genetically modified uh, warfare, that the only way you're going to live is uh, sooner or later you're going to have to take the hamster disease. Um, because <laughs> he his thoughts is that you know it's it will it will ultimately this hamster disease will uh, at some point in time kill you because they will just continue to modify this thing until it gets everybody that hasn't gotten that. So, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe that's the case and well, I guess we'll see. So, and we think, oh, there's no way that these guys could be that wicked, but oh, I, oh, I think so. Yeah, I, I do. I think they're as bad as they get. And, um, you know, Terry McAuliffe is uh, running for governor there in Virginia where Wackadoodle is at there. And uh, I don't remember what that guy's name is there, but he is a joke. But McAuliffe is running against some guy that seems to be pretty conservative. And uh, in their last debate, uh, I think it was yesterday, McAuliffe made the statement talking about public schools and said, I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. Okay, so that's where we're at. I mean, that's the kind of things that you're up against. Uh, you're up against a, uh, a group of people that um, think that they they need to take your children and, uh, you know, re-educate them. And uh, I don't know. It's crazy, isn't it? And then I don't know if you saw this or not. A couple of things. Um, the uh, Border Patrol, you know, they had those pictures well, there was a video came out. I watched the video. I don't know if you guys have seen the video, of the uh, you know where they took the pictures showing uh, where um, 
the vice president, I can't remember what what her, uh, can't remember, oh, Kamala, Kamala, yeah, Kamala, yeah. So um, I wonder if you get tagged for misinformation uh, just mentioning her name, because she is misinformation, isn't she? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, she, you know, how horrible it was and the prez, uh, when they, um, made him get up, you know what they do with him. They give him his speech to read and they say, look, you need to read this word for word. And if you do, we'll give you your rubber ducky back. But if you get off of this, you're not going to get your rubber ducky today. You're, you're going to have to live without it. So he said that, uh, the man that was on that horse was going to have to, um, uh, pay dearly for what he did. And well, then you come out and you see the video and you find out it wasn't at all what, what, um, they were saying, which is, I mean, that's just the way it is that they, they always, uh, are, are doing that. But I find it interesting that he is now requiring all the border patrol. You must, um, uh, take precautions against the hamster disease uh, and and you will be required to to do this, or you you <laughs> ice cream for Joe. You won't get any ice cream, and you're not going to get your rubber ducky. Yeah. So they are required to do this, uh, but the immigrants that they're trying to keep out aren't. I, I mean, is this not a war on America? On America? I mean, I don't. Uh, I, I you know it. Uh, it's just a open, blatant war against this. I mean, they are destroying the economy. They, they're destroying the border. They're destroying, what, what was that, Nelson? All the things that they're, they're after, you know, they, they want to destroy the, they want to destroy the church. Um, they're just not going to get that one done. They, they might destroy everything about America, but they'll never destroy the church. And, because they're not big enough to destroy that. And God may let this country go completely south in things, but uh, he will always be there for the church and uh, truly thankful for that. And then I also read this too, and I, I even looked it up then, see if this is true, but there's a, there's a thing called Operation Dynamo. And Operation Dynamo is, is a, um, it's a civilian run and it's um, donor funded that these civilians are, are taking jets in and then they are uh, working at getting people out of Afghanistan. And they're still doing this. And as a matter of fact, they just loaded up a group of people just here in the last day. They had on this flight out of Afghanistan, they had 28 Americans, 83 green card holders, and six Afghans that had uh, special immigration visas for helping the government, right? They, they get those guys out of the country, they fly to Abu Dhabi, and then they're going to bring them to America and they have been denied. They have been denied access into their own country. I, I mean, th this is, uh, uh, I mean, it is wicked, you know? And they don't, you see, if they let them in, then they're going to have to admit that they left people behind. And so that they, they are just uh, casualties of, of this, this lunacy that is going on. And there it is. Uh, 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 Nelson collapse the military, collapse the health care, collapse the supply chain, collapse the dollar. I don't know if you saw this. I, I looked last night and they had a, a picture of all, all of the ships, the, the cargo ships that are waiting uh, in the ports. And this wasn't just the port of LA or, or over on California side. This is the ports that come in in all sides of America. And I mean, we're, we're talking, we're, we're probably talking 100,000 or hundreds of thousands of of uh, 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 shipping containers that have what what Americans need, and they're sitting in ships right outside the port. I mean, we're not we're not talking that they're still in China or these other countries. We're talking they are right outside 
they're on our ports and not unloading. And I mean, it, it is a war uh, that that is taking place. And and so, you know, just wake up to it. You know, I don't know what to do about these things. I don't I don't know about this hamster disease. Whether we, you know, need to to, you know, it. it I don't know, man. It's just it is crazy. And and maybe they will one day. It'll come to the point where um, if you don't have it, you're gonna die. I mean, maybe they'll just continue to de develop this and send it out and keep sending it out. There was an article that that is the, the purpose of promoting it as hard as they have because they know that those who are conservatives, those who are the you know followers of the former uh, prez that um, they won't they are they're not going to to uh, take these things that will help them survive the hamster disease and uh, so it will kill them and you think that's not civil war yeah I, I know we're here we are promoting misinformation but uh, I don't know I guess we'll see right <clears throat> and uh, one day we'll know but um, here's what I read this morning, and I, I find this to be a, a help to me. I, I mean, I, I think of how many people we buried lately, and and over the last two years, and and I think I I do think people grow tired of you know for two years now the the press all we've heard on on TV in the press on the radio in papers and. It is the hamster disease. Everything is about the hamster disease, you know, and, and and it just wears people out. And it wears people out when they hear me get on here and, and it's like, I just don't want to hear this anymore. And, and I just want things to get back to normal. And and it doesn't get back to normal. And so I think people give up. I do. I, I think that that's why I think we have seen an abnormal number of people that have perished and, and I think much of it is, yeah, that it might be other health issues that bring it on, but I think it's because of the spirit of people has been broken, and and uh, uh, and many of them give up. But then I read this, and and what an encouragement it really is to those that know Christ. This is what it says in Isaiah fifty-seven. I mean, you talk about jump out at you this morning, Isaiah fifty-seven verses one and two. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away. We see that. I mean, why is it the good ones are, are leaving us? You know, I don't know how many preachers that I have, whether I knew them or not, just through uh, social media that these guys knew these guys. I, I mean, so... That, that was encouraging to me to know the numbers of people that are in the ministry and, and people I don't know, but how many of them have perished over the last two years? I mean, these are righteous men. They're, they're merciful men that have given their lives to the ministry and given their lives to the gospel. And, 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 here, and, and, and the world could care less. The, the world could care less about these guys that are in Abu Dhabi right now wanting to get home. So what? We don't want you to come home because then it makes us look bad. So we're willing to let you perish in order for us to look good. I mean, that's the wickedness of the world today. And so here they, they uh, no man layeth it to heart, none can, and then it says, so the righteous perisheth and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Should I read that again? The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Uh, I don't know. You know, God, God is always has always shown us in scripture that he looks at death differently than we do. And, and, and really we should look at it 
we should, uh, hey, there's nothing wrong with longing to go home. There, there is nothing wrong with, with wanting God to, to come and let's just get this over with and, and nothing wrong with that. But don't, don't, uh, don't push for that. Don't, don't uh, tempt God with your own life. Uh, and uh, rather, uh, until then, remain faithful, right? But to understand that, honestly, death is a reward for those who are believers. And um, to, to think about the peace that they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in their, right, in their uprightness. I mean, that, that, that ought to be such an encouragement. And, and yeah, and, and, you know, I think by being in the midst of this, this battle that's going on, it has helped all of us to realize that, hey, this world isn't my home. Uh, you know, I don't, I, there's nothing here that, that wants to hold me back other than the, the people that God's placed in my life. And so let, let's, uh, let's look forward to that and, and let's make a difference in the lives of those that we love and, and how, I don't know, boy, that Isaiah 57 verses one and two, I highlighted that in my Bible. I've, I, I got this new Bible and, and I haven't been writing any notes in this one. I've just been highlighting verses and Isaiah has been just covered up with verses that, that I have um, highlighted today and, and, uh, just the, ever since I started using this Bible, how powerful it is what God's using here in Isaiah, uh, to, to encourage me in my life. And I hope that it encourages you. I, I mean, I, I love this. And then he goes on here in, in Isaiah and verses 13 through 16, he says, when thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them. So that's the, that's the wicked, right? I mean, God, it, 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 you're, you're right, Brian. Let, let's, let's quit fearing the coming of the Antichrist. Let's quit fearing the tribulation. Let's, uh, look, he saved us from the wrath to come. And, and, and here, they're, they're gonna get it. I mean, they're gonna get it. You know, that little Martian that runs North Korea, that evil little diabolical character, he, he's going to get it one day. And, and uh, Mr. Rubber Ducky's going to get it one day. You know, if they don't repent and, and trust Christ, they're going to get it. And, and what, you know, that nasty one there in, in California chewing on her ice cream, you know, she's going to get it one day. And, and so, see, now they, they quit. They quit calling me. Now they're calling the church phone. So, but uh, anyway, we go on and they're going to they're, they're gonna get carried away. Vanity shall take them. But then this is what he says. But he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. That sacred mountain, right? I mean, the place of God's dwelling. And and shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth in eternity, whose name is holy, I will dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever neither will I be always wroth, for the spirit should fail before me in the souls which I have made. I mean, for I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. I mean, God, you know, it, it just, these, these are encouraging to me. I mean, this is the reminder for me, my, my daily reminder, right? And, and then he says this in verse 19 here of chapter 57, I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. You know, I read that and I was reminded of the proverb, I'm not, I can't remember the address of it, but the way of the transgressor is hard. And 
here it says that the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. And there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. I, I mean, it doesn't it seem like it's just every day? You know, it's every day that the, the pressures are there. And it's like, can you people ever just take a break and, and just breathe for a minute before you are trying to clamor and grab something else and, and, and take away something else or promote yourself in something else? I mean, just take a break and, and, and enjoy what you've robbed people of already, but they can't. I mean, they just can't do it because God says they're, that they are searching for a peace that they're never going to find. And, and, and there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. And so we, we need to understand that. And Carolee, you're right. Ephesians 6, you know, I read that yesterday. We need to realize that this battle is a spiritual battle. And, and the only way that we can truly find the peace and the contentment and, and, and not give up it is understanding that we fight this spiritually. And you can be as in good a shape as you can possibly be and prepare for war and prepare for battle, and you can still lose because you haven't prepared yourself spiritually. And how we need to, to uh, prepare ourselves and, and make sure every day that with all the physical attacks that come, the best way you're going to defeat that is by walking spiritually with the Holy Spirit, right? He goes on in chapter 58, and this ought to be, I, I wrote in this, my delight, verses one and two, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sin. So first of all, you know what we need to do? We need to stand against the unrighteous. We need to stand against sin. We need to call it out for what it is. We need to preach the whole counsel of God. We need to to, to fight this wicked culture and not give in to it and say, well, it just is what it is. There's nothing we can do about it. Yes, you can. We, we, need, to, we need to continue to promote the gospel. We need to continue to promote the godliness of, of righteous living and, and turn away and repent of your sin. I mean, those things we need to do. And then he goes on, yet they seek me daily. So preach the word, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask me, they ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. I, I think maybe uh, I need to read this again, right? I'm going to read these two verses, 58, one and two again. And, and it, it shows us the things that we ought to do. Cry aloud, Spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Let that be our delight. You know, and, and that is one thing that this has done. I mean, it's, it's, I think that the, the, the hamster disease and, and everything else that has come with that and the power grab and the wickedness that is being promoted, that it, the one thing that it, it, that it has done is the genuine believer has made them stronger. And, and just, you know, sit, sit your sit your stare like a flint and, and don't change and, and stay focused on the Lord and living for him and doing what's right and, and don't let anger take over, but, you know, just keep trusting God and know that he's got this. And, and, uh, and then this is what he said in verses 13 and 14 here, chapter 58. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. You know, I think that 
all, all of this, and, and the thing that jumped out at me on, on, on this is a couple of things. I'm talking about the Sabbath, and I know in the Old Testament, Sabbath was a Saturday, but you know, before the Sabbath, God had created the earth, and what did he do? He rested on the seventh day, right? And so that's where it was instituted, and, and we know that, that that stopped at the law, uh, at the end of the law, and when Christ was uh, rose again from the dead, it tells us that the disciples then were worshiping uh, God because it's a New Testament, right? It's a new dispensation, and so now we worship we worship God on the first day of the week, which is a Sunday, and but it's still there, there's still the whole principle of a of a Sabbath. What is a Sabbath? A resting day. And, and it's more than just a resting day. It, it's a day that you are to give to God to remember who he is, what he's done. He's the creator. He's the savior. He's the one that, that we should worship. And, and so here, um, call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him not doing thine own ways. You, you know, we, we have... we. We've allowed so much to happen and take place on a Sunday anymore that it's not sacred. And it's not sacred to hardly anyone anymore. You know, we have we have people that that get mad at the preacher if he preaches overtime because they they they're going to miss the first quarter of their football game or their first half of their football game or or we have churches that have come out and and start having Saturday night services so that people can watch their stinking football game on Sunday. I mean, who's your God? You know, no wonder God's mad at our country. No wonder God's mad at our churches today. No wonder God, you know, we're, we're the way that we are. And I mean, then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord. It's when we, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. I mean, God... God deserves it. And, you know, we just, we really do. We, we need to get back as believers to uh, the priority. The commitment is God. And, you know, people will skip church for everything, but bless God, I can't miss a day of work, you know, because I, I might not have as much on my paycheck as, as what I want. Well, you know what? God can take that job away. And God can make you stone cold broke if he wants to. I mean, God's the one that gives you what you have and you better remember that. I better remember that. Let's, let's make sure that we keep God in the priority where he needs to be. And, and that's all a part of the spiritual battle. And I'm telling you, those that, that don't, don't have the commitment, then we're in trouble you know what, we're, we're just in trouble and we just need to, to refocus. I need to refocus. You know what, sometimes, um, I don't know, sometimes I just lose focus of things and, and what we're about. And uh, let's, let's win the battle. And, and let's, yeah, we can be prepared for civil war, but I'm telling you, you better be prepared better for the spiritual war. And if we're if we're prepared spiritually, then we'll we'll know what to do when the day comes. And uh, until then, you know what? We just keep doing what we're doing, and we keep serving the Lord. Keep doing, you know, change things that need to be changed. You know, our, this has definitely reprioritized things in our church family. I think, and and even what we do in our church. You know, and. Uh, makes you realize that, you know, anyway, so, uh, I, I'm, it doesn't look like I'll be on here the rest of the week. You guys pray for me. I'm Lord willing right now. I'm planning on headed out to Missouri in the morning and, uh, I will be out there. I don't know when I'm coming back yet. Um, have a, that one service is on, it's kind of a memorial type thing on Saturday. Uh, and then I have a funeral that I'm preaching on Sunday afternoon, that's my nephew. You pray for that. I didn't think that I would, um, I don't think, I, I didn't think I would, you know, would be a part of anything. And now they've asked, they're gonna have it at a funeral home, a regular service, and so I'll be preaching that. Um, Marion, that, that uh, service is in Warrensburg. And then my parents live in 
uh, Trenton, Missouri, which is north, northern part of the state. So, and Warrensburg's right off I-70. But that, that's, on, that's on Sunday, and it, it'll actually be, um, the, the service will be taking place right at, as you guys are dismissing from church here at noon, it's at 1 o'clock. So, just uh, pray for that. I want to be a help to the family. And then my parents, I'm taking them down there to that, and then I'll be taking them home. Um, then I, I don't know if I'll be home Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday. I, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm not sure when I'll be back on here, but I won't be on here uh, tomorrow or Friday. And I, I'm pretty sure I definitely won't be on here Monday uh, either. So just pray for each other. And you know what? Just keep looking up. One day, one day, it's going to be worth it all, right? God bless you guys and have a great day today. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you back on here next week.